up to the stage, the absolutely wonderful Laura Lex! Oh my God, this is lovely. Thank you so much for having me. You guys have rescued me from London. I've, uh, <laughs> Londoners in the front row there. She's <laughs> laughing going, fuck yes, you do look miserable. Um, I don't know, I made the mistake about a year ago of moving to the old Kent Road in South East. You guys probably know it. Does somebody over there live there? Fuck, I don't know if you've ever been there, but there's a fucking good reason no one bothers with it on Monopoly. <laughs> it's just one of those places where hope goes to die, you know? It's awful. And, like, I, I, I wouldn't mind it so much, but I, I'm not really a city person at heart. You know, I was born and raised in Somerset, and I've discovered it's quite difficult to be sort of ghetto when you're from Somerset. <laughs> you know, I only found out recently you don't have to pronounce the T's in ghetto if you don't want to. <laughs> they are completely superfluous to the word. And um, you get in quite a lot of trouble for knowing what superfluous means as well. <laughs> it's just quite difficult, you know, because like, I was quite bright by Somerset standards, you know. By the age of seven, I could successfully recognise one out of two of my parents. <laughs> and, uh, oh, when I left primary school, um, I was voted girl least likely to have her brother's baby. <laughs> Thanks. Mainly because my brother's fucking hideous. <laughs> It's, uh, it's nice, London's all right. I'm doing much better there than when I was when I first started. My first week there was abysmal. I was like in Victoria Station and I was feeling quite proud of myself having conquered the underground without getting stabbed, you know. I just got a light fingering, it was fine. Um, uh, we've all been there. Uh, never wear lace leggings. I was, on, I was at Victoria Station and I was like, oh, I'm so cosmopolitan, I'm fucking Carrie Bradshaw. Fucking Carrie Bradshaw. No one would do that. Um, but I really hate Sarah Jessica Barker. Matthew Broderick should have been mine. Um, so never mind. Very niche. Uh, I was in Victoria Station and I was like feeling really proud of myself. And then this policeman walked past me with one of the golden retrievers, kind of all dressed up in the shiny yellow coat. And I was stood there looking at him, thinking, well, it's not every day you see a blind policeman. You right, guys? We're here at Dead Pat with Laura Lex. Laura, you just did spank. How was it? Oh, it's great. It's always great. It's Really good room. Spank's usually quite a rowdy night. What's the worst or most interesting heckle you've had? God, a spank. Um, somebody said yesterday that they wouldn't mind licking my back sweat, which was pretty rank. Mm. People don't tend to be too mean to me. What but... I like about that, he says, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, if the offer was yeah. made. He doesn't specifically want to, but if I'm licking, he's happy to step up to the plate, which, you know, fair play, Chivalry's not dead. <laughs> in the house share with like five other people because that's where you want to be at 25 and, uh, and I didn't quite realise how middle class our house was in comparison to the rest of the area well it, obviously well, when I moved in I had to explain to the neighbours that where I'm from you're only really likely to get shot if you're out at night in an orange fur coat chasing chicken but <laughs> other than that you know I didn't, I didn't really realise there was much of a divide and then um, the, obviously the riots kicked off last year and you know, I wasn't home when the riots happened not because I was rioting obviously we're tired was already administration, so there's nothing I really wanted, there's no point going on, is there? And, uh, and so I text back to my housemate and I was like, is everything all right back in the house? Because old Kevin was a bit singed at the time. And, uh, and my housemate texts him back and she just goes, well, they're looting the Tesco and the Argos. Now, Tesco and Argos are about 100 yards from the front door. She said, they're looting the Tesco and the Argos. We've had to bring the recycling bins in. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> It's just like a beautifully middle class reaction to absolute social deprivations. <laughs> Please don't fling that tuna can. It takes 45 minutes to sort it these days. We've got six different bins. Like, just fucking mental. It's bonkers. The best thing I think about London is the men. Give us a cheer if you're in a relationship in here. You were really hesitant about that. They're like, well, I, I kind of came with someone, but fuck it, it's Tuesday. We might be waking up Wednesday with someone else making eggs. Um, obviously, I plan my one night stands by the breakfast they're likely to produce, but you guys might be different. That was, that was lovely noise you just made there. It's just so musical. Are you in a relationship, lady? No. Maybe, and you said no. I think we have a lesbian just over here, but one of them doesn't know she's getting a cheeky pinky in the interval. Um, how exciting! Watch the one in the late, she's the one that's gonna blush, I reckon. I thought moving to London, I was like, I will be in a relationship in no time. And it turns out even city folk don't want like an excitable midget bouncing on their bottles. It's, <laughs> it's not panned out, it's not panned out how I thought it was, but it's just, I feel like, I feel a bit like romance is dead. 
head. Like if I'd been born a hundred years ago, I'd be being wooed with a man in a top hat. The other day, I was walking into town and I was minding my own business, just walking along, and there's this guy walking along next to me, giving it that walk that like 20 something men do where they just look a bit itchy. <laughs> and you see them giving it all that, and you think, if you were just wipe, you could walk like a normal person. Like it's front to back, mate, the rest of us mastered it at five. Just crack on and he's giving it all that and he's making the eye contact like he wanted to start having a chat I thought I don't want to do this but then he started our little rendezvous by just going so what are you like on your way home from school <laughs> it's like what? well it's been a while since I was in a relationship but that is a weird way to go about finding a girlfriend surely because one I'm 25 years old and two if I were on my way home from school Surely you shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> like, that's weird. Just like, are you into after-school clubs? Nope, me neither. Let's go home and fuck. Like, that's bizarre. But then I was thinking, well, actually, you know, there's a recession on. If I've got quite a youthful face, I could make some money out of this, you know? I could sort of, like, rent myself out to primary schools, you know, and just hang around outside the school gates and attract the dodgier men, you know? Let them have their way and then be like, ha, joke's on you, that was legal. Because <laughs> then everybody's happy, aren't they? Because the kids are safe to play Knock Knock Ginger and I've got someone to hold me in the dark hours. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? So tell us about your show this year. Oh, I'm doing, the, uh, the comedy stuff I'm doing this year is really good fun. We sketch comedy for the first time. I'm working with a comedian called Math Brown. Um, so we're doing a lot of just stupid stuff to make people laugh for an hour. Like, none of this. My dad died on a world show about it. Just know, we just wanted to make you laugh for an hour. That's the whole point of the show. Some really good fun. Really stupid. This lady here is just staring at her like, fuck, I think she's serious. <laughs> Not sure if it's the cardigan or the lack of hope in the eyes. I, uh, I got a review last week from my show that just said watching Laura's comedy is a bit like watching a woman on the edge of a nervous breakdown. Uh, rang my mum to tell her about this and her feedback was just, oh well darling, at least you're only on the edge of the breakdown. <laughs> Not really clawing me back from the edge there, woman, are you? It's difficult. She worries about me. She thinks I'm a little uncouth. But I think there's a very fine line between classy and trashy. You know? It's the difference between Chanel being your perfume and your name. <laughs> but it's definitely there, it's difficult. Because then you worry, don't you? Because, like, I mean, I just like a nana, as the lovely ladies have always said, but I was in uh, Leicester Square the other day, and, you know, they employ those people to be like, go clubbing, and you could be wearing a nappy and hiking boots, and they'd be like, yeah, you want to come clubbing? You're like, no, I don't. And I was out, and this guy just walked straight up to me with his little flyer, and he went, damn, you have got some pretty titties. <laughs> You know, what, what about me makes you think that is the right thing to say here? And I thought that couldn't get any better. It's kind of like, well, 10 out of 10 for rhyming, but as a story to tell the grandkids as to how we met, this is not strong, you know. I thought that couldn't get any better. And then he went, damn, you have got some pretty titties. I want to, like, take you to Nando's. <laughs> Fucking what? Like, I didn't know whether to be thrilled that there was good potential I was gonna get some chicken, or, like, devastated. I thought I was at least Aberdeen Steakhouse, sort of, a level. <laughs> you know? Fuck. Oh, was that my friend Kate? And Kate's very flat-chested, but I hung out with her anyway. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and he, she sort of looked at me and she was like, oh, maybe that's what I need to do to find a man. Maybe I've got to get some balls, you know? And this guy, Casanova, he just looked at her and he went, yes, but you have got a lovely scarf. <laughs> Like the two were completely interchangeable items. So, Laura, you've been uh, doing comedy a while. What would you say is your preparation before a gig? What gets you in the zone? I have to make a list of all the jokes I'm going to do, even though it's the same list every time. I can't just look at yesterday's list. It's got to be a new list with a new pen. Um, and then I have to do a bit of jumping, a bit of jumping, just to be a bit energetic. And I cannot wear shoes. I don't think I've ever done a stand-up. Yeah, you, you did, you did spank barefoot tonight. You won't be, I don't think our camera would have caught it, but you were, you were barefoot and on tippy toes. I just can't do it. I just, I don't have a pair of shoes that feel right, so I've just got to do it none. Uh, Marcel um, Leconte does it barefoot as well. Uh, so does Tim Minchin, so, you know, if my career goes <laughs> anywhere near theirs, I'm Maybe happy. that's the secret. Maybe. I mean, toes. Toes are funny. Yeah, Paul McCartney uh, didn't wear shoes in the uh, in that Abbey Road, and... Uh, yeah, and, and he's, Paul McCartney's kind of famous still. He's doing all right. I mean, he butchered the opening ceremony, but... He butchers... I don't understand Paul McCartney... 
Oh, it's very loud. I think they're agreeing with um, us. Who keeps booking Paul McCartney? He can only play four songs. I don't understand why he keeps getting booked. It's just got... one person in the royal family is like, fucking love Paul McCartney, and the rest of the country is going, fuck off. It's not even your song. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> I kind of decided I'm like the sexual equivalent of a slinky, you know? Those toys, you, you sort of might take it home, but you'll only ever use it once. <laughs> you know? You've got to really prompt it to get it to go down properly first time. <laughs> so, well, generally, someone ends up at the bottom of the stairs with concussion. <laughs> so, you know when... Uh, you haven't had sex in a while, you know, you must know. And, um, <laughs> you know, you haven't had, so, oh, you are cuddling, maybe you do, I don't know. I don't know how long you've been together. Um, you know, you haven't, you haven't had sex in a while, and you're just going through a dry spell. It's perfectly normal, you know, dry spell. And you're trying to work out whether your dry spell is like a sandbox, you know, it's quite manageable. It might even be fun for a while. Or whether your dry spell is more like the Gobi Desert, <laughs> in that you're probably going to die in it. <laughs> and I uh, had a realisation the other day that my dry spell is now full on Sahara mode. Um, I was out with some friends of mine and one of my friends had hiccups and my other friend told her that the best way to get rid of hiccups is to have an orgasm with your fingers in your ears. And I was sitting there thinking, well, how the hell is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> if my fingers are in my ears, it didn't even occur to me that there could be someone else in the room. Um, even that was really lovely, maybe so much lovely. But if you could uh, give any tips to anyone that wants to start uh, doing comedy or something that they'd want to take up, what would be your... Uh, Number one advice. Just keep doing it only if you like doing it. Don't do it because you think it's going to be amazing one day, because it probably won't be. But as long as you like being on the stage and you like making people laugh, then it's worth it. But otherwise, it's bullshit. Just fuck off now. There's too many of you. <laughs> yeah, there's loads, yeah. and most of them are better than me. So yeah, very talented bastards. Don't be there. Like yeah. this fucker. Look at this face. Beardy face. Biddy face. Well, this has been Laura Lex, this has been <laughs> Dead Pat. Bring it in. Oh, oh that's a nerd.